Hello there and welcome. This is Point of View. I'm Mark Leishman and we're talking recycling with James Rutter from EnviroWaste. Now James oversees a network of recovery centres, recycling facilities and landfills as GM of infrastructure. So a, a very warm welcome to the show, James, coming to us via Zoom today, which is a bit different for this particular programme, but uh, we're going to get along fine. James, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Mark, and uh, thanks very much for having me on the show. To start, I suppose, by telling us a little bit about yourself, and I always like to say your journey to Enviro Waste, how you got there. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually grew up in a small um, farming village in the UK, so a very small village of, of less than 100 people, and my family had a, um, a small arable farming operation there. So as a kid, I was sort of in and around agriculture, and uh, growing up, I worked um, in the agricultural sector quite a bit um, before I went to university. Um, and so the rural sector is a topic quite close to my heart. Um, and I've been in New Zealand for about 11 years now. So what sort of farm, just a small farms in, in the area and what part of England was it? It's about 200 acres of mainly uh, cropping activity. So wheat and barley and oats and those kind of things in the, in the east of England in Lincolnshire. So um, yeah, it was a pretty great place to grow up. Um, and mm. uh, yeah, it's always nice to go back there and visit and, and get back into the local community, I guess. Just out of interest, have you seen Clarkson's Farm, the, the TV series? I, I Absolutely, yeah. It's a great TV program. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fantastic self-deprecating. I think uh, I like. I prefer him doing farming than cars, quite frankly, Jeremy Clarkson. But nonetheless, how did you end up at EnviroWaste? Hey, well, perhaps more especially, how did you come to New Zealand? I went to university and I did... Um, actually physical geography and uh, geology and earth science um, subjects when I was at university. And um, I think I probably got into that because of my rural background and sort of the connectivity with the earth and the land kind of thing. Yeah. Um, anyway, when I left university, I, um, I took a job in a geotechnical um, consultancy business. And so I got into um, the construction industry and Ultimately, I ended up on a on a construction site building a landfill uh, in the UK. I sort of had no connection with the waste industry before that, and that's how I, the first sort of uh, contact I had with the waste industry. Anyway, sort of out of that, I did a couple of other um, construction jobs on on um, landfill sites and other waste facilities. Um, and I, I was really at a stage in my life where I was looking to travel and you know get down here to, to New Zealand and maybe Australia and uh, and get out and about in the world and uh, I, I saw a job on the internet with EnviroWaste for, for an engineer at, um, at the Hampton Downs landfill down in the North Waikato and um, I put an application in and eventually I heard back and had a few phone conversations and then jumped on a plane and, and ended up out here in New Zealand working at, at Hampton Downs and really only had a, a plan in the beginning to be here for a year but um, you know 11 and a half years later I'm still here. So environmental engineering and I, I guess sustainability, it's a, it's, a, it's a buzzword at the moment, uh, but it's always been something that uh, has been, I guess, a large part of your career. Yeah, yeah. And I, to be honest, I, I don't think I had a plan to sort of get into this, this area and particularly the waste sector um, and from the beginning. It's something I, I kind of landed in. But I think, as I sort of said before, my rural background kind of led to an interest in the construction industry and civil engineering. And I ended up working on those um, those waste facility projects. But once you get into the waste industry, you realise that it's actually so diverse. Um, and it's something that you can't really help but be passionate about. Um, and particularly now, you know, um, it's really an area of focus for um, people in society. And it's really at the forefront of pe people's consciousness. Uh, and so it really couldn't be a more exciting time to be in this industry. So, you know, I really love it and uh, I'm really passionate about the future. So, James, tell us a wee bit about Enviro Waste. Uh, I mean, how big is it? Well, I'll just sort of start from the beginning. The company was um, was established in, in 1995 um, and it's really grown to become a leader in the um, in the waste management sector and really sustainable resource recovery. Um, we've got uh, about 1,100 employees at the moment uh, and a fleet of about 550 vehicles across the country. Um, and we work in partnership with many of New Zealand's, um, you know, local councils, local government bodies, communities and commercial customers. Um, and we've got uh, a corporate umbrella band called uh, EnviroNZ. And underneath that, we've got three main service brands, which are EnviroWaste, EnviroWay and ChemWaste. They're the, really the three ones that people would have seen um, out in the marketplace and on our trucks and things. 
So can you go through those? What, uh, what, what are those initiatives that uh, I guess people might not necessarily be aware of? Oh, in terms of, uh, you know, some of our sustainability initiatives, and, and I'll just focus on a couple of the that are sort of linked to the rural sector and, uh, and the food industry. So um, I think as a business for some time, we've been focusing on um, shaping our solutions and our business to be more of a materials business and really um, finding practical ways to reuse materials and unlock value from them. Um, one particular area that um, I think really exemplifies this is our, what we call our product recovery division. Um, that division is a, is a business that services a lot of New Zealand's largest food manufacturers and deals with um, bulk food that's out of specification and, and can't go to market, um, you know, for several reasons that may be unsaleable. Um, our team in that product recovery business, they... Um, recover and recycle packaging materials from, from food products. And then um, with the uh, organic materials, so the, the food waste, that either goes into stock food or into composting facilities, um, which is then processed into a compost, which goes back into fertilizer and back into the agricultural sector. So two real key connections there with the, um, with the stock food industry. We've got a couple of big partners um, that we work with and farmers direct with stock food and then um, those organic materials being processed through composting and going back into material that goes in as a, a fertilizer input into, the, into agriculture. Uh, and then most recently um, that business has also started working with or our business has started working with the New Zealand Food Network to capture food at its highest value really and get it back into, um, into human consumption um, and help feed Kiwis who really need it the most. So that's the New Zealand Food Network. And so the, the food, I mean, where do you get it from? And, and when you say it, it's at its highest value, um, uh, you mean it's not near its use-by date? That, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, what I, what I mean is that there's um, there's an opportunity for some of the these materials to be um, to be reused in the, you know, as food for human consumption. And so, you know, um, in partnership with New Zealand Food Network, we work with the same clients. And so we can work with them. So firstly, New Zealand Food Network can work to get material that's surplus into um, human consumption and out to people that are in need of, in need of food. And then we come in uh, at the next layer down almost that if it can't go through that channel, we can uh, you know, recycle the packaging, um, repurpose the food into stock food or put it into composting and then generate that organic um, compost that goes back into the into the agricultural industry. So you really get that sort of closed loop with those materials that, that don't end up going to market in the traditional way. Uh, which is amazing, isn't it? It's really, you, you're coming up with ways where um, product doesn't actually end up in your landfills, which is, is, which is somewhat ironic, but it's very, uh, very good for the environment, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. And, and not just the environment. I mean, it, it unlocks a, a lot more value from those materials. And, and, and I, I think for us as a company, that's where we see our role of, of sort of working with these materials, finding the best reuse for them and unlocking value from them. Now, you've also got a, what, an environmental partnership with the University of Auckland? Yeah, so we're, we're, um, we're working with the University of Auckland um, to help introduce a new engineering master's program for sustainable resource recovery. Um, I think this is the first of its kind in New Zealand, at least. Um, but what this partnership does is it allows us more opportunities for innovation and allows um, the institution and these students to come across, you know, the real world problems in our business and the in industry and have a real um, key role in help solving them. And are you finding that the students are taking this up and, and, and enjoying or uh, well, finding an industry perhaps that they hadn't, hadn't thought of? Absolutely, yeah. There's a lot of enthusiasm there from the university and we're, we're sort of at the beginning of the journey with it, but uh, I'm really excited about what the future holds for that partnership. I think it's going to be... Um, really fantastic for, for both them and us in terms of the ideas they can bring to our, our business and the industry. I can certainly detect your enthusiasm for your career choice, so that's fantastic and, and good on you. But we'll take a bit of a break now and uh, we'll be back with more. My guest, EnviroWaste's James Rutter, uh, he's the general manager there, and we'll have him right back with more on this uh, topic of sustainability and the environment and what to do with our waste. This is Point of View on Country TV, back in a moment. Welcome.
Welcome back, this is Point of View, I'm Mark Leishman, my guest on Country TV tonight is James Rutter, who is the General Manager of Infrastructure at Enviro Waste. And I guess, uh, James, as we start this uh, second part of the programme, um, look at the initial and perhaps ongoing impacts of uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, what you've learnt, and how has it affected Enviro Waste as a company? Yeah, well, look, Mark, it's uh, quite a pertinent, pertinent question given the, the sort of situation we're in at the moment with me here at the home on Zoom. But, you know, as, as an essential service, um, we have to operate during, during all conditions and um, we have to adapt rapidly to changing conditions. And um, obviously, we need to keep collecting waste from the curbside. Uh, and I'll probably take the opportunity just to salute our frontline team that are out there at the moment doing that job. They're doing an, an incredible job of delivering these services to our community and what are really, really difficult circumstances. It must be a logistical nightmare, I suppose, is it just collecting all those bins and uh, every week? Uh, fascinating, uh, that, that whole process, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, no, no, no difference for our guys in terms of that. That's a challenge that they deal with them. Um, you know, week in, week out. But yeah, it takes a lot of planning in terms of uh, in terms of the, the routing of trucks and those kind of things. And uh, how many vehicles have you got? Approximately 550 vehicles on the road. So yeah, it's quite a quite a few trucks out there. So what services are you offering for the rural community as we're, uh, you know, a rural channel um, that uh, I guess uh, the special needs of the of the agriculture sector? We're, we're involved in the rural sector in, in several ways. Um, the first one is probably um, we, we operate uh, a number of local transfer stations and recycling facilities for several councils across across rural New Zealand, providing those sort of uh, those base services such as, uh, you know, delivery of waste and recyclables. Um, and then more specifically to farmers, we've, we've actually been involved in the delivery of several rural waste events around the country. Um, those events involve, involve um, collecting things like um, agrochemical containers, oil containers, um, farm plastics, silage wraps, bulk bags, things like that for recycling. Um, and I think we've had, had, had quite a bit of success with those events and quite a bit of uptake from, from farmers. Um, the other areas we're involved in, which I've touched on before, is really around um, where we have organic waste processing facilities, where we're composting um, food waste and green waste. The, the output from that is a, is a compost material, which is going back into horticulture and agriculture as an input. A lot of that material goes into things like orchards um, around the North Island. Um, also then with our product recovery division, which I also mentioned a little bit earlier on, um, we've got that stream of um, stock food that's coming out of that business that's going both directly to farmers and then into um, stock food manufacturers um, who blend it with, with, with other materials to produce an end product that goes out to farms. So are those services being used correctly and, uh, and I guess to their full potential? Yeah, I think in terms of the, um, the, the rural events that we've been involved in, we've had um, great uptake from the local communities and a lot of enthusiasm for them. Um, and I think there's, there's really strong demand for our, for our compost products that come out of our um, organic processing facilities. And I think the volumes of that will grow over time as there's more and more um, diversion of those materials and, and um, more and more processing facilities for those materials, I think. So um, I see that as a growing area where, um, where, where farmers can play, sort of play a part in having those as inputs into their farm. But it seems like at the moment that the market demand is very strong from, for those. Um, and I think in terms of stock food uh, at the moment, our team do a fantastic job of working with farmers uh, and our other partners and in, in placing those in, into, uh, into farms and into, um, into really good reuses. Are there any ways that you would think perhaps farmers can use the services better to, to their advantage? Look, I think, I, I think it's been done quite well now, but I think the challenge for the future of our industry, for our customers is... Um, how we continue to improve the value realised and the outcomes from the materials that we sort of once classified as waste, now we see them as materials. Uh, and the challenge is for us to communicate those stories to, to our customers and, and to farmers. And, and you know, so we're, we're all part of the same journey. So environmental waste um, offers organic waste and composting services. Um, you know, more Kiwis, of course, are adopting alternative uh, disposal methods. What do you think has encouraged the switch? Well, look, I, I think. Firstly, it makes good sense to get um, organic materials out of landfill streams and into reuse applications. They're ultimately, you know, quite valuable materials. Um, 
these materials, so food waste and green waste, can be pro processed into high quality compost um, that goes back into agriculture. We've, we've actually got quite a large site at Hampton Downs in the North Waikato where we're composting around 20,000 tonnes a year, uh, probably a bit more than that actually, and processing those into compost materials. Uh, and these materials then get distributed to farms and orchards across rural New Zealand. So I, I really see uh, organics as, as a big growth area. And I think we're getting really good uptake, both from local government and from consumers. And what are some of the other observations you might have about Kiwis and their waste habits? Uh, and do we need to improve? And, and I guess, how can we improve them? Look, I think there's a, a fantastic and growing awareness around um, recycling and reusing materials. Um, however, I think uh, the majority of people only see a small part of the industry and the solutions we provide. And I think the connectivity between the, those solutions and the processes we use to, to reuse these materials and back to the person, you know, the consumer is really important. Um, I think as with everything, it's all about communication. And as an industry, the challenge for, for us is to tell the story of waste materials beyond the curbside bin. So uh, in your 11 years with the company, I mean, have you noticed, has it been quite a, quite a sea change in people's attitudes? Absolutely. I think it's, um, I think it's been a big time of change, um, both uh, you know, in society and the industry in terms of people's awareness about um, the issues around waste. Um, but I, I actually see looking into the future that, that you know, that's going to continue and that rate of change will, will probably increase as, as the industry you know, becomes a materials industry rather than a waste industry, I guess. So that's what you consider probably the future is, that's uh, for your uh, enviro waste and also, of course, the, the whole industry, that it, it will change. Yeah, I see, I see you know, the next, the next five years, there's going to be a lot of change in, in the industry. And I think... Um, Enviro, at EnviroWaste, we see ourselves as really transitioning um, as part of that. And, and, you know, we're really a materials management business looking to um, divert as many streams as we can into the best reuse possible and extract value from them. Uh, and the organic space, which I've talked about a lot today, probably because of its sort of connectivity to the to the rural sector, is a really good example of that. And you know, the work we're doing with New Zealand Food Network, the composting operation, uh, and the stock food streams that we're creating from what once would have um, gone to landfill, I think, is a really um, a really fantastic story. And I think ultimately there'll be huge opportunities across a number of different areas in the industry to um, to replicate that. So, James, are there any other uh, partnerships, I suppose, that are of note that you're quite excited about? Yeah, I mean, as a business, we've been seeking new uh, and creative avenues to form strategic alliances uh, and industry collaborations, um, which direct res resources towards a mission of uh, really good environmental um, stewardship. Um, and EnviroWaste is partnering with others to help drive accountability, research and innovation in a number of areas. Uh, I guess a good example of this is a... Uh, a project we've got um, for carbon certification with an organisation called Toy2. Um, as a business, we're aligned to the New Zealand targets uh, for emissions and being members of Toy2 will provide us with an emissions reduction plan um, and targets for the business that are based on uh, science, which will bring another layer of discipline uh, and rigour to the work and projects we've been pursuing uh, over the past few years and will do into the future. I, I guess in terms of sustainability as well, it's a, a big focus area for us. We, um, we, we have a number of electric um, collection vehicles on the road, zero emission um, electric vehicles out there collecting waste. And um, we're transitioning our light vehicle fleet at the moment to, um, to, to low emission um, vehicles. And also that's a key consideration for us with the, the heavy equipment that we have in our fleet as well and reducing the, car, the, the, the carbon impact of those. So the battery powered, the, those big trucks, and ultimately that's the plan that they would be all battery powered. I think at the at the moment, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the technology available, uh, the, the collection trucks area, so the, the trucks that pick up um, bins from the curbside, you know, glass trucks, food waste trucks, um, the side load trucks that pick up the refuse bins, that's an area where the technology is quite well developed and we've got a number of those, uh, the trucks operating in our fleet at the moment. So composting is obviously a, a major part of, of what you do these days. Um, how big is the plant and, and how does it operate? Yeah, I think, you know, as I mentioned before, the, the plant that we have at Hampton Downs is doing over 20,000 tonnes a year of, of 
organic materials. And if I if I sort of start from where it comes from, there's uh, there's sort of two main streams, which is one is food waste materials. So a number of local um, uh, authorities, councils have uh, food waste collections at the, the curbside, um, which comes from people's households as commercial food waste streams. So that comes into the facility. And then there's really the green waste, garden waste um, waste streams. So uh, that comes in from, from a variety of different sources. So those two materials come into the facility at, at Hampton Downs and the material gets shredded um, down to a, to a small uh, size so it can be processed. Um, and then they're blended together uh, and they go, Basically, what happens in the process is that the material goes into some bunkers, which has um, air being blown through it, and that air pushing up um, through the through the compost pile um, helps with the process of uh, the material breaking down. Um, and then it goes after that, it goes into a maturation process where it has some big Gore-Tex covers over it, and it sits there for a, a period of time. Uh, and then after that, it goes through a screening process to sort of get down to the final product. Fantastic. Is this um, uh, something that's going to be a New Zealand-wide thing? Is, is that the ultimate plan? I mean, you say some councils are doing it. it. Sounds like a really sensible way to go, doesn't it? Is, is the plan to make it a national thing? Oh, look, I think the organics processing um, area of the industry is really uh, a growing area. Um, the food waste service, as I talked about at the curbside, they're being introduced across a lot of New Zealand at the moment. So I think there'll be larger and larger volumes of that um, available to the processes. So yeah, absolutely see that as a really uh, a key growth area in the industry. And so James, uh, I can tell you were excited. It was a, it's a good career choice you made all those years ago and the future as well, does what's to come really, yeah, well, make it great to get out of bed and go to work each day? Oh, look, I think, Mark, it's an incredibly exciting time to be in the industry and really, um, you know, becoming that materials business that I talked about, processing all these different materials and, and unlocking the value from them um, as, you know, as per the stories we've talked about, about the organics area of the industry. Um, it's a great time to be in the industry. I think it's at the forefront of people's minds. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited about the future. Must be quite a nice feeling. You feel like you're doing some good. That's fantastic. Absolutely, yeah. So thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And all the very best. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, that's my guest, James Rutter, General Manager of Infrastructure at Enviro Waste. Uh, thanks for sharing your story. And join me again next week. We'll have another point of view at the same time here on Country TV. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.